Greetings and welcome to this module on software quality assurance. I honestly think that this is one of the most important modules that, that you're going to look at because understanding how to ensure that your software has adequate levels of quality is just the essential problem in software engineering. So we want to understand the motivation, why we think this is so important, if it's not already clear. Um, learn about some of the tools that are available and in particular the ones that we're going to be looking at in this class. Okay, so at the highest level, what do we mean by software quality assurance? And at the high level, of course, we're talking about the three prime directives, right? So, you know, does the system um, accomplish a useful task? Can someone download and install it? And can a developer enhance it? Okay, so, you know, that's what we mean at the high level. But at the low level, how do we operationalize those things? Well, there's a lot of little things you should you should be able to do in order to assure these these prime directives such as having decent tests conforming to coding standards um, not having you know uh, excessive levels of complexity and and um, and so on and so forth and so I want to distinguish between manual and automated techniques and and when you employ both of these kinds of techniques I think and most others agree you um, have the highest level of assurance that your, your software is going to have adequate levels of quality. When I talk about manual quality assurance, I'm talking about things that, that um, you have to do essentially, um, they, you do them uniquely for each, each um, system that you write. So there's some domain specificity to them. Um, so the two big examples of manual quality assurance is writing unit tests and conducting code reviews. Okay, so you can't really reuse unit tests each time you develop a new software system. You have to kind of start over from scratch. Similarly, you know, the fact that you've reviewed one software system doesn't mean that you can kind of, you know, not worry about the next one that you do. You have to do the code reviews on that one as well. Manual quality assurance is absolutely essential. You can't get around having testing, can't get around having code reviews um, of some form or another because um, you... Um, you can find things that are only possible through kind of human interaction and very domain specific testing. Um, so for example, if, if you fail to implement a requirement, okay, um, that's something that really only through code review you can, you can find. Even testing won't find that because testing only tests the code that exists in general, doesn't test code that doesn't exist. On the other hand, um, the, Manual quality assurance is, because it's manual, it tends to be fairly expensive, okay? And you, you can't really, you know, amortize or, uh, you know, the, the effort on one project to do this over another one. So you have to use it judiciously. On the other hand, automated quality assurance are tools that um, do source code analysis or runtime analysis and they are generally tools that you set up with some kind of domain independent rules generally about you know coding format or you know the knowledge of the language or you know kind of design requirements or levels of dependency that you find acceptable and then you run these tools and they're you know after having them configured they're they're basically cheap to run they may take a long time but they they run in the background they don't require a human involved in the loops okay and um, the great things about that is that some of these tools are so sophisticated that they can find defects that, that you know, a human just couldn't see because they're doing some kind of complicated control or data flow analysis. Um, and secondly, that once you've got them configured, you know, you can not only run them repeatedly on the same project, but generally run them on other related projects as well with, with very little change. The problem with automatic quality assurance tools is that they can find errors they can flag things as being errors which upon further inspection aren't really errors and that can happen fairly frequently that's called a high false positive rate okay and that can be kind of irritating and if the false positive rate is too high then you start to ignore the results of the tool and even if they do find an error it's kind of buried amidst all these other non-errors okay and then secondly they, you know there's just certain classes of errors that they can't find so really what we want is a combination of automated quality assurance and man manual quality assurance. They're, it's not like you replace one with the other, they both have their uses. So let's look at really quickly through some of the tools that exist just so you get a sense. There's Lint, that's the canonical 
automated quality assurance tool. I don't know they started this in the probably in the seventies, initially developed for C code, and you know finds things where you know you dereference null pointers or whatever. Um, so that you know Lint is kind of the granddaddy of all of them. Um, FX Cop is a um, Windows specific. Um, uh, you know, source code analysis system, and you can see it can find various kinds of um, flaws in, in your program. Coverity is a system that focuses on security related uh, problems, and um, you can see uh, examples here of the kinds of defects. And th this table comes from a bunch of um, different open source projects that they, that they looked at. JDepend is a program that looks for, uh, kind of assesses the design level quality of the system, and that is based upon the idea that if program, like if you look at different classes or different packages, if there's a lot of linkage between them, that generally makes the program harder to modify because you might have a, you have higher odds of a ripple effect. So oftentimes you might want to establish rules about how much dependency you, you're willing to have within a system, or you run the tool to find the modules that have a lot of dependencies and then see if you can refactor them in some way. So here's an example of the afferent and efferent coupling, so the inward and the outward um, dependencies from one package to another. Structure 101 is an interesting package. Um, that or an analysis tool which goes over your software, produces these high-level diagrams and looks for circular dependencies, looks for um, places where y you know you've you've got um, you know coupling that's that's inappropriate. They define this thing called um, you know lean fatness and leanness and tangles and cycles and and so forth. So. Um, um, that l tries to again look at the overall the design level complexity of the system as opposed to individual function level complexity. Crap for J um, is a um, humorously named tool, but the concept of it I think is is really a, is, is is very interesting. The idea of this, and they they like to refer to themselves as change risk anti patterns. Okay, and so they look at two metrics in particular code complexity and testing coverage and their insight is that if you have very complicated code if the if a module is if a function or a method is very complex in terms of its you know conditionals and loops and so forth then there should be a lot of tests for it or should have very complete test coverage and and if um, and conversely if the code is relatively simple then maybe coverage isn't as important so they say that code that's good either has to be of low complexity or it has to have very good test coverage. And bad code is either highly com complicated without the corresponding level of testing that makes it, makes it good. Okay, so, um, so basically, you know, you can, you, you can have code that's not crappy as long as it's very simple and it doesn't need to have you know, extensive coverage in that case. So, and getting the coverage is probably fairly cheap in any case. If you've got code or areas of your code that have been determined to be crappy according to this metric, then the idea is either you can reduce the complexity of it to solve the problem, or you can write more tests. So really, I, you know, very neat kind of approach. Um, so here's a, um, a, a detail where it goes through and it looks at the basic, um, you know, the, it looks at the methods in your system, it computes the complexity, computes the coverage, and then decides you know, what, what levels of problems you have. JMeter is another um, um, quality analysis tool, this time focused on performance. So basically, it simulates loads on your system, which is generally some kind of server-based system, and then records the response time. So you can, and produces these little graphs, which shows how you know throughput is changing over time, and and you know the response time for the various hits on it, and and um, enables you to kind of understand that level of quality. We're going to focus on three quality assurance tools um, that are going to be built into the build process. Okay, the first one is CheckStyle. This is a development tool that's basically just looking at coding standards. Um, and has some design level best practices. We have a configuration file that I've defined that um, 
your your Maven Palm will download from the inner tubes um, to provide uh, checks appropriate for this class. And here's an example of a check style report. Okay, the second tool is called PMD. This tool is very similar to check style, but tends to focus more on design level problems. Um, and um, here's an example of a of a report here. So you know you have an empty catch block. It finds that. Okay. Now the interesting thing about both check style and PMD is that it operates on the source code. Okay. The third tool we're going to be employing for automated quality assurance is called Find Bugs, and Find Bugs differs because it analyzes the byte codes, not the source codes. Okay. So. For example, it's not going to, since bytecodes don't contain, um, you know, indentation, don't contain the Java docs and so forth, um, find bugs is no use for those kinds of problems. But what it can do is find fairly subtle problems with respect to the control and data flow. So for example, we have, I have these lines of code here where we say string b equals bob, and then we call the replace function on that string, replacing b with p, okay? So you'd think it would be pop, but because replace is a non-destructive operation, basically b dot replace this computes a resulting string, but then since that string is not assigned to any variable, that that's just thrown away. Okay. So and then b is referenced later. So find bugs can see in this that this intermediate state and statement computes something that's no longer ever used. So the question is, why did the programmer have that statement in there anyway? Because there's no side effects, you know, there's there's it's it's a useless um, line of code. Okay, so find bugs can can detect these kinds of errors, which are errors that check style and um, and PMD can't find because they're not doing that level of semantic analysis. Okay, so here's an example of the out um, of the output of the find bugs detector. Okay, so. Um, Going back to the general, so those are the three things we're going to be doing in my next screencast. I'll show you a little bit about how we have that integrated into Maven. For this class, again, the goal is I want you to be able to create the highest quality systems as fast as possible. Okay, And so in order to do that, have that level of efficiency as well as effectiveness, what you've got to do is figure out how you combine manual and, qual and automated quality assurance in the most synergistic manner. And that means that, for example, when you do a code review, you don't look at indentation. Okay, that would take a long time. And, you know, you have an automated tool that can just guarantee that the indentation is correct. All right, so you try to use automated tools to enforce whatever they can and then explicitly focus your manual quality assurance on the stuff that, that the automated tools can't get at. Okay, thanks a lot. See you soon.